Hello everyone. Today I'll be reviewing Scarface. So Scarface came out in 1932 and was directed by Howard Hawks. And this is a gangster film and it stars Paul Muni as Tony Camonte, who is a gangster in the city of Chicago. So this is one of those really early classic gangster movies along with ones like The Public Enemy and Little Caesar. And in this film, Tony Camonte is a really ruthless character, um, quite an unlikable protagonist in many ways. Um, but he starts to deal with bootlegging, really sort of selling and buying alcohol, because obviously during this time, prohibition was still a thing in America. Obviously, alcohol was illegal at the time and it wasn't lifted until the year after in 1933. Tony Camonte, he really has lots of rivalry with lots of other gangs. Um, uh, um, in this film so um, in a lot of ways this is a, v a very predictable gangster film it's uh, fairly straightforward going into it it was very much what I expected but that's not necessarily a bad thing because it did mean that the plot was very easy to follow and it's actually a very entertaining film as well we've got lots of shootouts and gunfire and things like that which was actually fairly violent for the time because um, this film actually came out before the Hayes Code was introduced in 1934 where they had tougher censorship restrictions um, on lots of film content. I think Paul Muni um, is really excellent as Tony Camonte. Like I said, not a likeable character at all, but he's so brilliant to watch on screen. He really puts everything into this performance. Um, he seems to always um, know what he's doing. He's in charge. He does what he wants. He really doesn't care um, about anything he doesn't care about anybody else at all you really get the feeling that he's the man in charge and that everyone sort of fears him but everybody respects him at the same time we also do get um, a small appearance from the actor Boris Karloff in this film um, he plays a character called Gaffney who is one of the rival gang members and he actually um, only has a small appearance I think he only appears in the three scenes in the whole film and it was quite interesting because actually during his scenes, um, you know, Boris Karloff was an English actor, and I could hear his English accent slipping, slipping through a few times as he was speaking. I'm not sure whether that was intentional, but it was that was just quite interesting. But anyway, Boris Karloff actually the previous year um, had played Frankenstein in the big movie, so I'm not sure whether the, um, this was actually filmed before Frankenstein came out because. Frankenstein made Boris Karloff um, a pretty big star, but in this film he's often like third billing or not even that really. He's he's not a a main character in this film, very much a side character. So going back to Tony Camonte again, part of what is interesting about his character is his relationship with his sister, because his sister in this film um, she plays quite an important role. She's um, seeing men all the time. She's going out. She seems to have um, different boyfriends, and Tony really doesn't like this. Um, every time um, he sees his sister with another man, he gets angry or he punches them, um, and he reacts furiously. He seems very possessive over his sister. He doesn't want anybody else to have her except him. And this sort of leads into the, um, I suppose, relationship between him and his sister, and that they're actually very close, and that he's... He's almost jealous of all these other men when they are with his sister. Now, having watched this film on the Blu-ray behind me, we have the original theatrical version, and we also have the um, alternate censored version, which has a different ending. You can probably predict sort of where this film is going and what is going to happen at the end. Um, the characters tend to meet the same fate in both versions. It's just that in a slightly different way, um, towards the end and the reason there was an alternate ending it was just seen as a bit a bit of a less violent ending I, supp um, I suppose certainly with the restrictions that they had um, and in fact this film was very controversial for its time and it was actually banned in quite a lot of cities in America so when they had the um, alternate ending that was an ending which was often played after this film was originally released um, after its original theatrical version with the original version. Sorry if I'm not explaining it very well, but um, yeah, basically there's an original theatrical version and an alternate censored version. Really the major difference is the ending. And it is worth saying that actually at the start of this film, this film does have um, a message 
basically um, condemning the actions of the characters in this film because this film was seen to glamorise violence and glamorise gangsters. And in fact, this film also did later have a subtitle called The Shame of a Nation, uh, basically just to emphasise that the filmmakers don't condone the behaviour of the characters in this film, as I said. What I did find interesting is that this film was co-produced by um, Howard Hughes, who was an aviator. I actually often used to get Howard Hawks and Howard Hughes mixed up. But anyway, Howard Hawks is the film director, but also Howard Hughes, um, who was, well, the aviator, a very rich man, very rich businessman. He also um, co-produced this film as well, so he also had, had an effort in it. And in fact, in, um, there was a few early 1930s films in which he also helped produce. So overall, I think this film is excellent. I have obviously seen the 1983 remake, um, the uh, Brian De Palma one with um, Al Pacino in it as well, where he plays Tony Montana. And that is an amazing film, obviously much more modern and even more violent than this one. However, I have to say, slightly controversial, I think I do prefer this version to the Al Pacino version. I just think this version is more focused. Um, it feels grittier, obviously the Al Pacino version is a fantastic film and certainly going to be a lot more appealing to modern audiences but certainly as a gangster film which was I suppose pioneering in many ways I think this 1932 version is brilliant so if you love your classic gangster films um, then yes this certainly needs to be checked out though as I said the plot is fairly predictable but that doesn't necessarily uh, mean it's a bad thing so overall, I'm going to give uh, Scarface a rating of 9 out of 10. Like I said, if you're a fan of classic gangster movies, and this is, well, this is absolutely essential, along with also The Public Enemy and Little Caesar. So there we go. So that is my review of Scarface. So have you guys seen Scarface, this version or the 1983 version? Yeah, you can let me know. So yeah, if you have, please let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.